What's going on guys, Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Anytime you see a company that has a 32 inch subwoofer, makes you think they must be serious. Check out this $3,500 32 inch sub by Cosmos Audio. Well, they also make a five channel amplifier, the EP2000.5, and they sent me one over to run some tests on. So I said, sure, send it on and let's check it out. Again, the model is the EP2000.5. We'll talk about the specs here in just a minute. Uh, you can see those there on the owner's manual. Get the two Allen keys, of course. You get a remote bass knob. This one does have the clipping indicator and a power indicator, so we like that. It also has the uh, telephone style RJ12 connector on the back, so we like that as well. And of course, you get the remote bass cable in the kit. It's long enough to reach all the way to the back of your vehicle. This amplifier has a list price of $7.99, according to this, is the intro price. So directly from their website only, and you can see all the specs here. We'll go into a few of the high-level details of the specs. Multi-channel amplifier said with one ohm for the sub-channel, two ohms for the other channels, a four-way protection circuit, um, high-quality copper printed board, zero-gauge input, power output, four ohms, 125 by 4 plus 650 by 1, two ohms, 180 by 4 plus 1,000 by 1, and at one ohm, it's rated 1500 watts to the sub channel. Now let's take a look at the inputs of the amplifier. You can see the RCA jacks here. There are six different RCA jacks for inputs. And you have to run at least four of those. Unfortunately, there is no switch to run with two. So channels one and two, you have a gain control, high pass filter, off and on, as well as an adjustment from 20 hertz to 5000 hertz. Low pass filter from 50 hertz to 5000 hertz on or off. So you can actually run band pass. Channels three and four are the same as one and two. They have the gain, the high pass, and the low pass. And again, you can either run it full range, you can run it high pass only, low pass only, or you can run it band pass. So this is a very flexible five channel amplifier. That's really nice. Now for the sub channel, you have a switch for off and on. I'll talk about that later has a gain control again, subsonic from 10 hertz up to 50 hertz. And the low pass filter is from 250 hertz down to 35 hertz. Make sure you don't crisscross the subsonic and the low pass. <laughs> and the bass boost, zero to nine dB, and it doesn't tell us what that frequency is, probably 45 hertz. And there's a connection for the remote bass connection. Now we'll flip the amplifier around and check out the other side, which we have the power and ground and also all the speaker connections. First up, power and ground are one alt connections. So you have plenty of juice there for your input as well as the remote power connection there. For the speaker terminals, these are the crossways for channels one, two, three, and four. As you can see here in my glowing pictures with the colors, <laughs> uh, these all accept eight gauge. However, channel five is over and under. So the plus is on the top, the minus is on the bottom. Just make sure you get that right when you hook it up. Now, if you want to bridge the amplifier, channel one plus channel two minus, and then channel three plus and channel four minus. So this spreads out those inputs and works really well. As far as dimensions go, 19 inches on the long side by nine inches on the wide side. And there's also the millimeter equivalents there. And as far as the height goes, 2.5 inches or 63 millimeters. Now I'm going to tease you a little bit here with the amp guts. We're not going to show those. You have to stick around until after the dyno test to see them. But before you do that, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Check out the link in the video description for some Wilson Audio merch. Get you all looking cool like Big Daddy here. First up, we're going to do the four channel mode here with a bridge at 8 ohms. Equates to 250 by 2. The amp is rated at 125 by 4. So again, we're just doing this to load all the channels. Of course, the sub channel is also loaded at 4 ohms during this test. Looking for 250 by 2. Here's the certified test first up to 1% THD. And oh yes, 262, 272. Yeah boy! Now we'll reset the amp dyno. Let's try the uncertified test up to the clipping point. Should get a little bit more power if the voltage is up high enough. And 262, nope, 264, 267. So again, that rated power plus a little bit more with actually a little bit less voltage. So looking good so far. Let's switch it to the dynamic mode here. And we're doing all these tests at 40 hertz. And again, the sub channel is also loaded 
uh, as well at 4 ohms. So this is full all channels loaded here test. This is not any BS stuff. This is the uh, worst case scenario because most people are not going to be running the sub channel uh, or running all channels uh, full range. So good power there overall. Now we'll try the one kilohertz test here. And as you can see, it's going to do more power because the sub channel is not truly going to be loaded because it's not going to see that one kilohertz signal. It'll be crossed over. So we got 308 and 320 right at 14.46 volts. All right, so there you have the four channel mode. Let's try the sub channel at four ohms. And again, we have all channels loaded. The sub channel is rated at 650 watts. So let's try certified first, 40 hertz, rated 650 at 14.4. And here we go, it's counting, counting. Whoa, 905 at 14.3 volts. Yeah, boy! You big dummy! Now we will reset the amp dyno here and try the uncertified test. See if we get up to clipping. 40 hertz. Sine wave. Waving to your mama. Waving to your grandma. 918 watts at 14.46. Again, incredible compared to the rated 650. Definitely hit is underrated on the subsection. Dynamic burst sent a pulse tone into the amp. Doesn't get quite as high as the other numbers, but still way above the rated power of 650 watts. We're 875 here at 14.54. Now let's talk about the results. It's rated 125 times 4 plus 650 by 1 at 4 ohms. We measured 134 by 4 plus 905 at 4 ohms. So beat all those numbers. And we're going to estimate efficiency around 84%, just taking all the different numbers and adding them up and also the current of the strong. Now let's try the four channel mode again, this time at four ohms bridge, where it's rated 180 by four, which equates to 360 by two at four ohms. So here we go. Certified test up first, 1% THD. And we're a little bit shy, 334 and 353 at 14.46 volts. Let's reset the amp dyno and try it uncertified, see if we can get that 360. And we're still a little, oh, well, actually if you add the two up and then uh, divide by two, it's right at 360 watts. So at clipping, it's right at the rated power. And again, we have the sub channel loaded here and these tests are at 40 Hertz. So this is the worst case scenario. Most times you're not going to be running the full four channel mode in full range on these amps and having to load it at 40 Hertz, but 370 by two dynamically. And then once again here, we're going to do the certified test at one kilohertz where this doesn't really load down the subsection. You're going to see it's going to easily do that 360. We got 430 and 457. So quite good numbers there. Now let's do the sub channel at two ohms. It's rated 1000 watts at 14.4. We also have the other channels loaded, all four channels loaded at two ohms as well. Look at this, 1320 watts at 14.3. That's kicking. Now let's switch it up. Switch over to the uncertified test. Up to the clip, clip, clipping point. You big dummy. And keeps counting. 1355 at 14.24. Now reset it one more time here to do the dynamic test. Send a pulse 40 hertz tone into the amplifier. And yeah, good numbers here. 1385, oop, jumped up. 1392, 14.32 volts. Very impressive performer on the sub channel. Rated 180 by four plus 1000 by one. And we measured 172 by four plus 1320 by one at two ohms. So impressive overall. Now for the one ohm test, we're only gonna do the sub channel it's rated 1500 watts, but all the other channels are still going to be loaded at two ohms. So we still have the amplifier loaded down. Rated 1500 by one, 1774. Kicking it. This is like the most powerful five channel I've tested to date.
Damn shit, bar. All right, now we'll reset it and try it in the uncertified mode, 40 hertz. See what we get here. Look at this. Whoa. 1877 right at 14.42. Color me impressed. Dynamically, can we hit that big 2K number? Ooh, we're close. Oh, yes, we do. 2,062 watts. Oh, 2,064. Jumped up a little bit. Trying to impress me a little more at 14.56. Rated 180 by 4 at 2 ohms plus 1500 by 1 at 1 ohm. We measured 172 by 4 at 2 ohms plus 1774 at 1 ohm. All certified. I am impressed. Now, of course, you guys are going to ask. Numbers look good, Big D. But do it bump dough? Let's find out. All right, we have the Cosmos 5 channel hooked up. Have it hooked up to the Savard 8s. These are wired at 1 ohm. We have the ELAC bookshelf speakers. Those are six ohm speakers. We have the amp bridged. So it's seeing a three ohm load on each channel. Let's try a little back rub. All right, for this track, I unplugged the ELAC speakers because this is just a bass test. I want to see how the subwoofer channel does with only the sub, so let's find out. Here we go. Woofer test. All right, I hope that answered the question for you. It did bump though. Now let's find out what's inside. Five amps and more. Let's take off the eight screws on the bottom. See what we have inside. Here we go. Pull the panel off and uh-oh. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Hey, where's the beef? I don't think there's anybody back there. Yeah, I would have to say based on the guts of the amp, it did not look that impressive. Uh, however, as you can see by the numbers, it actually did the numbers... Um, pretty well across the board. It has 2200 microfarad, 100 volt caps here for the rails, input filtering 35 volt, 2200 microfarad. And yeah, here is the gut shots. It's really interesting to see the transformers and the wires jumped all the way over uh, to the MOSFETs. And you guys who repair amps probably see this all the time, but I haven't seen this very much in previous amplifiers. Here you can see the fan which is controlled by thermostat now let's talk about the good stuff it is a powerful five channel amp the sub channel is underrated has 10 inputs for flexibility crossovers are really flexible because you can run a full range high pass low pass or band pass which is very nice it has a remote base with a clip indicator the amplifier is korean made which is going to make a lot of you happy has metal potentiometers, which are very robust. We really like the metal pots. They uh, handle it well. As far as things could be better, it doesn't have an input selection. It requires either four, five, or six channel input. You can't just do two. The clip light on the remote on my amp did not work. I am going to get a replacement. We'll try that. 
doesn't have the Tiffany or panel mount RCAs, just has the regular cheapo RCAs. It has a large footprint. And as far as the price goes, this is a relatively unknown brand. So some of you might say it's pretty high at 800 bucks. Overall, we really like the amp, perform well, has a extremely powerful subwoofer channel for a five channel amp. In fact, it's the most powerful five channel amp I've tested on the sub channel. And if you need the extra power, you want a single amp, I would take a look at this one. Looks pretty good overall. So thanks as always for watching. Make sure you stick around till after this. Got some extra features. This is Big D. Till next time, I'm out of here. All right, let's see if you guys can hear this power up noise, the kind of squeaky sounds this amp makes. Here we go, I'm gonna turn it on. and it stops. I don't think it's the fan, because the fan's kind of loud, but the fan is under here. That's the sound of the fan. It's not making that squeaky, queaky sound. I don't know, what's up? You ought to hear my um, stool squeak a little bit too. <laughs>